eighth graders that are sitting on the left section just yep. follow. Thank you, thank you. Eighth grade, as you're coming in, make sure you're sitting in your home row seats. If your parent is here, or guardian, you may sit with them. And also, as a reminder, please have your homeroom representative coming up front. Get started here in about one minute.
All right. And although I'd like to have the YMCA continue, Mr. Kaharchek, if you want to start the music, thank you. Could I have your attention up front here? I first want to welcome everybody to our 8th and 9th grade scheduling meeting. It's awesome to see parents involved in the scheduling process. So obviously, it's probably the most uh, intensive scheduling process to date for our students transitioning to high school. Also, want to welcome uh, any families that are attending our FASA YouTube page. Uh, they are streaming live with us today. And for those of you that are in here and those tuning in live, these uh, presentations are recorded, so you'll be able to go onto our FSD YouTube page at the end of the day and access this video if you need to, if there's any information you want to follow up on. Also, just as a reminder too, or a heads up, there will be an email coming from the school today that will be sending an electronic course scheduling form, and then we'll also have a PDF of this presentation on the middle school website for your reference. So just start. Let's take a deep breath. Parents, I think seeing that your kids go into freshman year, let's take a deep breath as well. This is the first of many meetings that we are going to have with this transition process. We are able to transition to yes, freshman year. Today's the first step in that journey. I give you information that is pertinent today, but once again, we're going to have many opportunities for you guys to all come up and visit the high school. We're going to have a move up day May 22nd for you in the spring, and then we're also going to have an orientation in August. Now, I want to remind you, this is the class of 2027. You are the class that transitioned to the middle school without having a scheduling meeting, an orientation, or a move up day. And you guys all survived. Give yourselves a hand round of applause for that. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> What I really want to bring into light here is we understand this is a nerve-wracking process. There's anxieties that come about with it. We could schedule 10 orientations with you as 8th graders, and you're still going to be nervous because you're transitioning to a new, a new school. You'll have new teachers. Unfortunately, you'll have at least one of the same principals. But uh, with that being said, we understand that you have a lot on your mind. There's a lot that goes into the scheduling process. So what I did as an activity this first time doing this, I asked the eighth grade homerooms this morning to give me the top two anxieties and worries that they have at this point. Now, are we gonna be able to answer all these today? Absolutely not, we might not be able to answer all these, but by the time you get to first day of school next year, hopefully a lot of these things will be covered not only through the scheduling meeting, but move up day and orientation as well. You'll also notice, and we'll introduce some of our teachers and guidance counselors that came down today for today's meeting. You'll also notice that there are some students here as well, some seniors. They're gonna be talking about their experience at the high school. Many of them, four short years ago, were doing this exact same process. Yeah, and once again, we understand you're gonna have anxieties around this, but we're here to support you. And there are many supports at the high school, just like we have here to get you through and get your day through each, and support you academically. So without further ado, I'm going to hand the mic off to some of our eighth graders. Eighth graders, if you could just say your first and last name, and on top of that, please uh, read the two concerns that your homeroom came up with. Go ahead, Anton, and we'll just pass the mic down. Okay, first question, Anton Claiborne. I'm pretty popular here. <laughs> Which math or English course will I take? And what is the official between the sections? Yeah, what's the difference between sections? Yeah. Sections. Um, what is the daily schedule like and how many Periods order. My name is Xavier DeWitt. How do we choose between all the options for classes? And how do the credits work? All right, I'm Danny Kane, and our homeroom is concerned about managing course workload and sports or extracurricular activities in our locker size and if we're allowed to carry around book bags. Hello, I'm Allie Smith. And my homeroom is concerned 
concerned with how lunches are going to be set up. We were talking with Mrs. Trudman. She said it was going to be different this year. And how much time we have in between classes. Hi, my name is Nicolette Zollinger. My home is concerned where do you have to take languages and can you take both? Hi, I'm Jake Polovich. And uh, my question is, are, what is standardized testing like at the high school and how many study halls will we have? All valid questions, and I appreciate everybody eyes up front. I appreciate the time that you took this morning to ask those, or I guess communicate your concerns. So some of those questions 100% will be answered today. Some of them will be answered as we move through our move up day and our orientation process. So before we begin the formal presentation, I would like to have our seniors talk through their experiences at the high school, and they might have some of the same anxieties like we talked about when they were transitioning up. Um, they'll introduce themselves, and they have just a brief talk uh, about their experiences at the high school. So Grace, go ahead. Hello. So hi guys, my name's Grace. I am one of the seniors at the high school. Um, I'm just gonna go over a brief little thing. So some of you did ask how many periods there are. There are eight periods in the day. You're allowed one time, which is kind of where you do the class. So I'm going to talk about the extracurriculars. We offer a bunch of different clubs, very different varieties, very different likes. There's key club, environmental club, chess club, and a bunch of other stuff. And there's also a lot of sports opportunities. So to manage that with school works, um, you know, use all the one time that you can and use all your study halls that you can. It's honestly not as hard as everyone, like, you guys may be worried about it. It's not that scary, I promise. You know, for the first day, you might be really eager. But just go out, take all the classes that you think you'd like. Don't worry, go for what you like, and um, like try to get involved as much as you can. Don't stress it about the schoolwork. Just try to have fun through high school, and just try to enjoy yourself and get into everything that you like. So I'm gonna pass it off to Chair right now. Hi, um, I'm Che. I'm also a senior, so that's fun to know. Um, like basically the questions that like you presented had to like they revolved around like a lot of like stressful things and honestly I would like to say that like talking to your teachers is the best thing you can do. Like they'll be honest with you if you're like not doing well in the class. They'll definitely like reach out to you if you're not like doing well mentally or physically or anything like that. They'll be very caring because that, that's really their job. Um, so managing stress in high school is actually like, way like easier than you'd expect. As long as you just like talk to your teachers and communicate with them like how you're feeling, what like expectations they have, and if you can't meet any of those like because you're like not mentally prepared or something like that. Um, just always speak up and advocate for your needs. Like if you definitely like need something, just talk to a teacher. Yeah, that's mainly what I have to say. Talk to your teachers. They'll definitely be accommodating. They'll help you the best they can. Thank you. I'm Colton, I'm also a senior, and I just wanna talk saying, if you ever procrast or procrastinate, just don't. It's just a bad habit. Hi everyone, my name's Gracie. Um, I wanted to talk about a little, a little bit about sports, because a couple, I think one of the questions was, um, like, how do you manage school and sports at the same time? How many of you are interested in doing a sport in high school? How many of you don't really know? Anybody? Okay, that's good. Um, well, I personally, I wasn't a part of a lot, but I did do a couple of sports and a couple of clubs, and I don't think I had a lot of problems with getting my homework done, um, having time after school. So if that's like your main concern, like if you're gonna do a sport, you don't know if you're gonna get your homework done, you will. There's gonna be study halls. You always have win time. Um, there'll be there'll be chances to ask questions. So do what you want to do. Like do do your sport, do your club. Don't like turn away from that if you think you're gonna be failing a class, because that's mostly like not the case. So just do what you want to do. What's up, guys? I'm Nate. Um, I'm the captain of the lacrosse and golf team. Uh, one thing I think that really helped me with high school is you know finding your group of friends. Um, playing sports, having, you know, that kind of like click outside of school where you can like talk to your boys or 
teammates. Um, another thing I like, uh, kind of just like something I always try to do is try some new stuff in high school. You know, you only live once and you don't want to leave with regrets. You know, go out of your comfort zone, try to find, you know, yourself and try to have fun. All right. <laughs> All right, give everybody a round of applause. Thank you. So if you notice a common theme with each individual that talked up here is try new things. And there are a ton of opportunities for you to try new things, not only with coursework, but also the different activities and clubs that we have at the high school. There are a ton of opportunities. And what's really nice about it too is a lot of these opportunities will give you interactions with grade levels above you. So you'll get to meet a lot of new people. So highly encourage you trying and scheduling some things that may be out of your comfort zone. So talking about one of the first questions we had, what's the school day look like? Very similar to what we have here at the middle school. There is a first period slash homeroom. We do not have homeroom at specifically like we do at the middle school. Homeroom is wrapped into first period. So you'll have attendance taken. There is something called BTV, which Mrs. Lunds is here today to talk a little bit about what that, uh, what her class is like. Um, and then you'll roll right into your classes. We have a total of eight periods. Obviously, one of those eight periods is not lunch, so lunch is scheduled a little bit different, where lunch is scheduled as one of your periods here at the middle school. And we also have, and we still will have, win time. Now, we are exploring some options of where win will be located, and we haven't come up to exactly what that looks like, but one of the things we're looking at doing is have win time scheduled for all grade levels um, that are common. So like maybe ninth and 10th graders would have win time at a separate time as uh, 11th and 12th graders. But that's purely to give you an opportunity to meet with those teachers to get some additional support. Win is run the similar way and it will be run a similar way. You have opportunities to meet with teachers for academics. We are going to have something separate than uh, with clubs than we've done in the past. Typically clubs have come a part of win time. We're looking to have a specific club period each week as well. So that is the gist with that. Um, win time is very, very similar. Um, there, as we talked about too, extracurriculars and clubs. There will be a list whenever we do move up day and whenever you do your orientation of things that you can be participating in. Now if you are interested in a fall sport, there are some things that need to take place prior to the start of the school year to be involved. For example, football, cross country, volleyball, those activities all take place early in August, just similar to what we do here at the middle school, they do start a little bit earlier. So we'll have signups for that coming up here within the next few, actually few weeks um, for next year. So we'll make those announcements. But the biggest thing is the club opportunities that you have. Many more clubs that are offered are offered at the high school than we do at the middle school. And there are some unique clubs as well. We won't get into what those look like today, but we highly encourage you to join as many clubs as you possibly can, both in school and out of school. And we touched upon some of the supports we have. We still have a lot of academic and social supports for you. Yes, it is a hard transition going from eighth grade curriculum to ninth grade curriculum. Yes, the coursework will increase, but there are supports for you when you do transition up to the high school. We have teachers that will have after school tutoring available, Plus, we have those win time options for you to meet with your teachers as well. So in a nutshell, too, and I know one of the questions that we had was lunches. What are those going to look like? We are working hard, Dr. Shipman and I, and this is not a guarantee, to try to schedule all ninth graders and 10th graders into the same lunch. So we don't have two separate lunches where ninth grade might be separated. We're trying to get that to be a grade level wise. That's still working promises, and I can't make a prom. Uh, obviously a promise that that will happen, but I know that's one of the biggest anxieties we get out of students going to high school. Who am I gonna have lunch with? Well, hopefully it will be with your entire grade level. So this is the high school in a nutshell. What we're gonna get into now is the purpose of this meeting, the scheduling portion. So I'm gonna turn the mic over to Dr. Shipman. Oh, before we do that, I have one other slide I wanted to talk about. We will be referencing this slide pretty much every single school year until you graduate. The biggest thing that I want you to focus on is this number on the bottom, 23 credits. As a high school student at Freeport, you need to earn 23 credits in order to graduate. We're going to talk about the scheduling process to make sure that you're set up to earn these 23 credits each year. 
So there is no surprises when you get to your senior year, whether you have to take additional credits or not. But the biggest thing out of these 20, you have to earn 23 cr credits. And then looking at this above, English, social studies, mathematics, four credits. That means you have to take four years of these three subjects. So those will always be in your schedule. What those look like will depend on uh, whether you want to take an honors course or if you want to take a typical course or what pathway you're on with your mathematics. So we'll get in a little bit into that with Dr. Shipman here. But the main focus, you have to have 23 credits by the time you graduate. Okay? We will take questions at the end. So if you have any questions coming up, please note that in your mind. But without further ado, I have Dr. Shipman. Um, Dr. Shipman will introduce himself. Many of you already know him and then talk a little bit about uh, our scheduling process. First of all, I know you all know me for the most part, but um, take a deep breath. I know it's a lot of information that you get right now, but this is supposed to be fun too. You're getting to decide kind of what your day is gonna look like when you're in high school. And you don't have to really pick that right now. This is just to give you some information to make sure that you know, you're ready to pick something to make sure you feel comfortable when you go to the high school, okay? So when we go through each one of these things, if you think of something you wanna ask, make sure you ask that right now because this is kind of a big deal, right? Every day you go to school, what you're picking and what your teachers are helping you do is deciding what your day is gonna look like, okay? So when we go through some of these things right now, I'm gonna send this in an email to your parents and it's already on our website, which is that big thing there, uh, but you can QR code that too. And what we have, on our website and what we use so we can know what classes we have and what you can do. It's called a program of studies. So think of a program when you go somewhere, it gives you all the information you need. That's exactly what this is. This will tell you every single class you can take in the high school until you graduate, what you would have to do to be in it, which is called a prerequisite, and what you do in the classes and when you can take them what grade level, okay? This is really important when you get in older grades and you keep moving through because there are way more choices you have as you move through through these things. But this you can actually look at online um, at any point and it has all the classes that you see on that white sheet you have there too. So one of the things that you're gonna hear me say and you're gonna hear Mr. Rand and Mrs. Fulton, wave Mrs. Fulton over there, she's one of your school counselors at the high school, uh, as well as Mr. Hanna, is that you need to schedule a certain amount of credits. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So I'm going to kind of skip over that for a minute. So on your white sheet right now on the bottom, if you look at that, that is exactly what I have on the screen right now as well. Okay, so let's go through those and make sure you understand what the difference is between those things. Okay, so English class, obviously you have to take that. You're either going to be an English 9, that's what you're going to see on the schedule, or honors English 9. So your English teachers right now are, should be talking to you over the next week, if they haven't already, to make sure that you are getting scheduled for the thing that you're going to be most successful in, okay? So they're going to write down that recommendation and that's what you're going to be scheduled for. If you don't agree with whatever class you have there when you're talking to your teacher, then that's something that your parent and your teacher should be emailing and discussing what those things are for that, okay? But over the next week, by next Friday, you should have had a discussion with your English teacher uh, for that. Next class, every ninth grader will take US, United States History too. So you will be scheduled that no matter what, that's your social studies class. Following one, integrated science, that's your science class, you'll all be scheduled for that unless right now you are currently in Miss, Mrs. Lang's geometry class. So if you're in Miss Lang's geometry class, you will be scheduled for biology next year for that. Any questions? The next one's probably the most confusing one for you um, to understand, but if you look for this ninth grade rotation, look on the very top of your white page right now, and do you see there's four classes that are marked intro to entrepreneurship careers, then intro to tech and engineering, and intro to robotics engineering, right? So every ninth grader takes all four of those classes, but they're nine week classes, so they make up one class period. Okay, and you'll have that next year, either first or second period. It'll be your rotation class. And then you'll have that for a nine weeks, each one of you. And each one of those classes, so you've had like introduction to technology, robotics, things down here. But one of the classes is uh, careers. And during that time, similar to what you do with Mr. Swergo here, is you're gonna get those career artifacts to be able to put in there what you need to graduate. So basically, we kind of take care of that stuff with you while you're in class. Do you have any questions about that rotation thing? Okay, math. So it says next sequential course. That means whatever you're in now, uh, 
determines what you take next. Okay, so right now, if you're in pre-algebra, you're going to be going to Algebra 1 next year. If you are in Algebra 1, you're going to uh, Geometry. Geometry, Algebra 2. It just determines which one you're going to be taking as far as if it's in an honors or a regular class. Again, your math teachers right now, over the next week, if they haven't done this already, will talk to you about that and see what they think and you think you're going to be most successful at. So if you hear the word honors and you think, I should just do that because that word's on there, you might not be successful in that class. And we need to trust our teachers, too, on there that are the professionals in those subjects to make sure they're letting you know what makes most sense for your success when you come to the high school. Because the worst thing you can do is fail something because you made a poor choice on something we could have taken care of earlier. Again, if you don't agree with what your teacher says, that's important that your teacher and your parents have an email about that or a phone call to make sure that you talk about that, okay? Uh, parents, uh, when you're deciding these things with your students, go to that program of studies because it is very descriptive for prerequisites what you have to do to get into an honors class, okay? So if they, you don't meet those prerequisites, we are um, steadfast in holding that requirement there for that, okay? So those first five things, including phys ed, um, are all required things that you have to do in ninth grade, okay? So again, one, Engli one or the other for English. You're going to talk about that with your English teachers now, and they're going to write down what you should be taking next year and talk about that with you, okay? U.S. history, no matter what, you're going to have that. Science, you'll be in integrated science, unless the group of you that took geometry this year, you will be in biology, Ninth grade rotation, first or second period next year, you'll be scheduled for that, and you'll have four classes within one class time frame over a nine weeks. And then uh, math, follow the next sequence, talking to your math teachers and deciding what makes most sense, and then finally phys ed. Phys ed in ninth grade is two out of six rotation days, okay? And every ninth grader will have phys ed during fifth period next year, so all ninth graders only have ninth grade in their phys ed. In the past, ninth graders were mixed with 10th, 11th, and 12th graders in there. So you will have very similar people in your phys ed class. Uh, when you don't have phys ed, if you're in biology, you will have two days a week also during fifth period of a science lab, okay? So you'll have double science uh, two out of six days. Uh, if you're in biology as well, you'll have two out of six days as a study hall. If you're only in phys ed and you don't have biology next year, you're in just integrated science, there's no lab for that. So four out of six days you'll have a study hall. And so everybody in ninth grade, it's fifth period for that, okay? I know that's a lot of info for that, but just realize that phys ed's two out of six days in your rotation for that, and we all have it at the same time, fifth period next year, okay? Now finally, you get to electives. Electives are classes you don't have to take, but you do need to have a certain amount of them by the time you graduate in order to graduate to meet our graduation requirements. So when we go through these on this white sheet right now, the most important thing that you need to remember is what those credit numbers are. So look at your white sheet right now. And on the far right side, it tells you what grade you can take a class in. Okay, and then the second to last column is how many credits something is. So if we go through that, the first four classes you can see, say, 0.25, right? So that means that it's a nine-week class. It's a quarter of a school year, okay? If it says 0.5, that's a semester. So that's two nine weeks put together, semester one or semester two, okay? And then obviously if it says one credit, that just simply means you have it every day the whole school year. Any questions about that? This is the really important thing. That far right column says what grade levels you can take classes in, yes? Okay. Look at that, because if you don't get into something that you want to do in ninth grade, realize that it might be offered in another grade, and you could just simply do that in another grade. Okay. Why is that important to know? Well, when we actually schedule things, seniors get the priority, 12th graders, on what they need in their schedule because they're the closest to graduation. Then it goes down to 11th grade, then 10th grade, then 9th grade. That doesn't mean you won't get everything that you want, but it's important to realize that if you don't get something, you might be able to take it another grade level, okay? So keep those two columns in mind when we go through some of your classes right now. One of the classes that's offered that is co-curricular in the evening is marching band. So if you're planning on doing that, that does not count towards your credit allotment. That's an additional 
uh, half credit for doing marching band. So when you do your scheduling, you're not going to add that to that. That'll just be added after the fact by Mr. Smith and the counselors. So you don't have to make that one of your elective counts for that, okay? All right, let's take a second right now and think about if you have any questions about just what you have to do right now as classes. Does anyone have one that comes to mind? I did have a question over here that I wanted to answer. There was a question about how long the class periods are at the high school, and Third. I know that doesn't go with, it. Mm -hmm. they are 41 minutes long, very similar to what we have here. 41 minutes, and then in between is four minutes between every class period for that. Wind time's a half an hour, lunch is a half an hour. So the question was, if you're taking biology next year and you're that, one, that uh, small group doing that, no, biology will only be with the people you currently have geometry with. There might be a couple 10th graders that if that fits in their schedule, that's the way it is. But uh, your math classes could all be mixed, 100%. Um, algebra class, if you're taking algebra next year, the odds, it's ninth graders that are in algebra. But if any other math, you could very well be mixed with anybody in your math, and it's what fits in your schedule. That's that's the point of it. Good question. You're going to actually get to talk to Miss Lunds about that in a second too. So we're going to our next step right now is actually talking about these classes, so you know what what you can pick. Okay. So before we do that, uh, this is really important for when you look at this white sheet right now. So when you schedule, you know you know what these things mean. So if you see what those three um, things that are written up there, weighted, AH, and honors. So if you see something on the paper that says weighted, okay, that means um, an honors class. And when those are weighted, that means that you get added on to your GPA. So there's 0.06 added on your GPA. So you could really have above a 4.0 uh, adding on a weighted class for those things. So if it says the word honors, that means weighted going along with that. And honors and weighted deal with the same thing when you're in ninth grade. It could be 0.06. Okay? AH stands for Arts and Humanities Credit. You have to have two credits of that by the time you graduate. So we don't want you to worry about that right now because a lot of the classes you take have an A and an H by them. You can see that there. So if you're doing French or Spanish, if you're doing uh, band or choir, there's several ones on there that you can see. And there's even more when you, you will have that requirement, no problem. Okay. So don't worry so much about the requirements right now. Just about kind of what are those one or two electives you want to take in your schedule. On the bottom, career pathways. So there's little symbols that if you were to go into our program of studies, the big document that has all the classes, these symbols will be by certain classes. So you know if you take a class like that, it might lead to you having a career pathway for those things. So maybe you want to go into a health-related thing or medical-related thing. You might want to find one of those symbols that has the, the health and human services signed by that. So you know you're kind of preparing yourself for whatever the next step might be. Okay, so we have four career pathways, and I know you've been talking about those in classes too, that are all in that program of studies for you to see. So if you want to see that and you're really thinking, I want to go into a, an arts thing, maybe I want to be a teacher, or I'm thinking about being a doctor, or things like that, you can look those things up on there. So uh, we're going to do this last. Let's talk about uh, classes now, okay? So on that sheet that you have in front of you, we're going to just go through each one of those things so you're aware of what you're looking at. So if you remember, we went over the first four, and those are your nine weeks. Everybody takes those. Any questions about that? Okay, we're going to go through each department right now, just going straight down the list, all right? Next up, if you look in the far left column, there's English. So remember, there were two English classes you could have scheduled, English 9 or Honors English 9, and you see that weighted part next to that on Honors English 9. Any questions about English? Next up, we have foreign language. So we have Madame Chenet here, who is our French teacher at the high school. And she's going to talk about French and Spanish, since our Spanish teachers couldn't be here today. So if you're thinking you might want to take French or Spanish, Madame, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> Bonjour. I love that, merci. Um, I met a lot of you or interacted with a lot of you right before Christmas, so if you don't know me, my name is Mrs. Chenet. I'm the French teacher at the high school. I'm gonna talk to you just really briefly about your options as far as foreign language goes. Um, so next year, you have two options. You will take either Spanish one or French one. Um, 
both courses are very similar in coursework. You're gonna learn basics, greetings, family members, um, colors, adjectives, verbs, all the stuff that you would learn, you know, to start out a language. Think about, you know, maybe you have younger siblings. What are the things they know how to do? Um, in addition to our classes, we do other things as well. Um, right now, the Spanish classes are getting ready for a trip to, I think it's Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, somewhere in South America, um, Central America. They're getting ready to do that. Um, French classes, we are uh, getting ready next year to travel to Europe. We're hitting France, Switzerland, and we're also dipping into Germany for a little bit. So there's the travel aspect. Um, we also do a lot of cultural things. We celebrate different cultural days. We'll do food and we'll do um, like different, like I said, different activities that go along with the culture. Right now in my French classes, we're doing what is called Mani Musical. How many of you are familiar with um, college basketball's March Madness? Most of you, that's good. So this is a competition that is based off of March Madness, but instead of basketball, it's French music. I know some of you are like, French music? I don't know. Let me tell you, even my kids who were like totally not all about it, they are loving it right now. They're singing French music, they're really getting into the voting, but it's based on that. Um, and this is a worldwide thing. We're participating with people all over the world, 22 countries, over 4,400 different teachers, plus their students. We're interacting with French recording artists. So just really cool things that we get to do when you take a foreign language. And I know that we said questions at the end, but I may not be here. So do you have any questions for me about languages that I can answer? Obviously, I can answer French questions better than Spanish, but. One question that I know you know, your parents might be asking this is back when we were in school, you know, it was like almost a requirement that you took a foreign language uh, because they would say you need to take so many before you can get into college. Well, that's not so much the case right now, but what we're noticing in the high school, and Ms. Fulton, you can correct me if I'm wrong about this, that a lot of the colleges are going to see that you took two or three years of a foreign language or world language in high school, and they'll waive you doing that when you're in college if you're having a major that doesn't relate to that, but when they're only seeing a year or no years with that, they're going to ask for you to take that while you're in college for that. So it's not a requirement that you take one of our world languages. We really would like you to if you're interested in that, but just keep that in mind that that requirement isn't there, but it's strongly encouraged if you think maybe you're going to be going to college one day as well. And something, too, to keep in mind, too, our level three and four courses, so what you would take um, your junior and senior year if you started your freshman year, those are not only honors courses starting next year, both of them, but they're also college and high school courses. So if you are planning to take a language, if you're planning to go to college and, and you know, you're going there, you can earn credits so that maybe you don't have to take those early levels of a course as well. So that's also something to keep in mind. Um, and also you saw Dr. Shipman showed you all the different like career pathways and stuff, something that you know, maybe you're not planning to call it, go to college or that's not you know, right now what you're thinking. You're never going to feel bad that you took a foreign language. You'd be surprised when you're gonna use it. All of those pathways that you saw, a foreign language is gonna be a really big help to you. So something to keep in mind. Any other questions for me? So that would be something probably Mrs. Fulton to talk to like the guidance counselors about. So that's a really great question. Something else too, I know when we had our eighth graders up here, somebody asked about two, taking two languages. I wouldn't suggest that your freshman year just because it's a transition, it's a new thing, but I do have a current senior who is taking both French and Spanish. So that is something you can do, but I just wouldn't recommend it freshman year. So. And you're, to answer your question, just make sure when we actually schedule, you talk to the counselor about that, okay? Thank you, Madam. All right, going down our list right now, next up on the departments on there is the health and phys ed. So your uh, phys ed, you'll be scheduled and you can see it's a third of a credit because you have it a third of the time throughout the year, two out of six days, right? Next up underneath that, there are several options for mathematics on there. So you could be uh, right now going into algebra because you're in pre-algebra or you're going to geometry because you had algebra this year, or honors geometry, or honors algebra two. The other class that's on there that's really important that you realize is if you are currently in algebra one, you're taking keystones in May. If you score proficient or advanced on that, you will be placed in whatever class you decide with your math teacher right now, whether that's geometry or honors geometry. 
in August when we get our keystone results back, if you are not proficient, say you're basic or below basic, with no exceptions, your schedule just gets moved to the other class, which is that Essentials of Algebra 2 class, okay? So if you do not get proficient or advanced on the Algebra Keystone this year, you will be put into Essentials of Algebra 2, no exceptions. But I'm only a point behind, no exceptions. That is the class that you go into for that because in January, you'll have to retake that Algebra Keystone because it is a requirement for you to graduate. Uh, for that. Any questions about that? Parents, any questions about that? Your school counselor will let you know if that change had to happen via an email or a phone call or something in August. So don't think it's just going to happen and you don't know. We'll let you know and communicate that if that happens, okay? So that's really important. You try your absolute best on those things. One of the questions one of the homerooms said was about standardized tests. So we don't give PSSA tests in the high school, okay? So every year you're not going to have a standardized test. But what you do need to know is there's three you have to take when you're in high school. Some of you already took one of them or will be. So algebra is one of them, okay? The other one is biology. So when you take your biology class in May, you'll take the keystone for biology, okay? So everybody will have biology at some point. And the third one is 10th grade English, so literature, okay? So after you do those and you get proficient on those, you will not have a, a required standardized test again while in high school for that. Now the thing is, if you don't pass those, we have to do many different things to get you to meet that graduation requirement. So just be really aware of that, that you wanna try your absolute best in these things, okay? Perfect effort doing things. Next up, our next department is media communications and the class that's offered is TV production. So here is Miss Lunds, who is the teacher for that class, Miss Lunds. Hey, good morning American school children, how are you? <laughs> I am Miss Lunds and I teach broadcast media at the high school. And the only class that you're able to take with me uh, your freshman year is a class called TV News Production, which is BTV. And we do broadcast our school announcements every day, and it's about a seven-minute show, and it's pretty an intense day. Um, if you like a non-traditional classroom but like work, I'm probably good for you, and you're good for me. Um, in addition to uh, television productions, when you are a sophomore, you can take something called digital editing, and I also teach a class called documentary film and um, broadcast media. So I have lots of options for you when you get older. I do know that um, it's very difficult to fit me in your freshman year. I understand you have lots and lots of things to do and you have lots of opportunities. And even more so than talking about my own class, I wanna talk to you about the opportunities. And I know that you're nervous to come to the high school and quite frankly, there's no reason to be. Those people that are at the high school were in your shoes. They know how you feel. One of the things that I, I these are um, four of my students up here. And I have to tell you that I couldn't pick four better students to talk to you today about being at the high school. The kids at the high school are very sweet and very kind to you. It's gonna be an awesome experience. Take classes that you like and try new opportunities. There's loads of clubs, there's loads of opportunities that you will, some of them you will like, some of them you will not like. One of the things that I think is one of the most important things at the high school is key club. Do you have key club down here? Not okay. Care what do you call it? No, key club at the high school. Care, care club here. Oh. Um, one of the things that at the high school at the key club is that obviously it's service. One of the things that are at the high school is we are very into service. We do tons of service. And if you can get outside of your own self and help others, you feel good about yourself. And that's awesome. So look at your schedule, fill it up. Study halls, ugh, I'm an anti-study hall person. But if you need a study hall, we have wind time. Use your sp schedule, fill it up, and you'll have a good year, I promise you that. When you have lots of activities, you meet lots of different people, and it's just better for you. I'm not gonna have to leave, and I can answer some questions, but these children here are my kids, um, and they'll probably be able to answer any questions you have about um, the high school or TV news production. Any questions? All right, have a good day. Thanks, Ms. Lunds. What she just said is really important. Try new things, and more importantly, you know, that fifth period, you'll have a couple day study hall and you do have wind time every day. So we really encourage you to use and maximize all two of those credits. You can fit those two extra elective classes in your schedule. 
Okay, you never know, it might be the best thing you ever did. Okay, let's keep going down here. Next one has music classes, and Mr. Smith, I don't know if you wanna say something, but I can just in general say that Mr. Karchik and Mr. Smith can talk to you about band and choir things for that. And the only class that's on there, I don't know if Mr. Karchik, do you wanna talk about stagecraft? Okay. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So uh, first of all, before Stagecraft, chorus and band, you don't have to have ever been in it before. We'll, we'll be happy to take new people too. So if you're looking for another option and you want to explore something new, we're always looking for more singers and more instrumentalists. So consider that. But Stagecraft class uh, is a, kind of a new course that we offered this year for the first time. And it is for anyone interested in learning the dynamics of putting on a, a production or a play from the behind the scenes perspective. Basically, we We'll get into a little bit of conversation about the history of theater and set design. Um, we'll do a little bit of uh, script analysis for different shows, primarily actually what the real show will be for that next uh, spring. And then you'll kind of work together to design an actual set and start building it, doing the whole budgeting process, designing, construction, painting, all of that. So it's kind of what we do in stage crew, but with a more educational component. And um, I th I'm excited about where we're going to go with that next year. Like I said, this year was the first year, so if you talk to anyone who had Stagecraft, they, they will have various different opinions. We were exploring all kinds of options in how to develop the curriculum. Um, but with your help next year, I think that'll be very successful. So if you're interested in doing anything like that, being artistic and a little bit of theatrical at the same time, that's a good option. And if you like to be a performer, I also highly recommend it because if you end up doing something like that in the future, they're going to also want to see that you have an understanding of how it works backstage. So consider Stagecraft design. The other part to that is like if you like um, doing things and like building things and stuff like that, that class is really good and a good start to the following year when you could take home maintenance or perhaps maybe you want to go to Lenape one day and uh, do their contracting program or welding or different things that are like doer classes. That class for Mr. Kaharchik is um, just like that. Yes. Good question. Thank you. So Lenape, how many of you have heard that word before? Anybody? Okay, so several of you have, that's good. So Lenape is our VoTech school, and there are different programs that we will talk about when you're in 10th grade that you could be offered to go there with, and you would actually end up, your junior and senior year, 11th and 12th grade, end up going there for various things that we offer in that. Good question, thank you. All right, after the music ones, we just have a few more here. So science, remember, you'll be in integrated science if you are not already in geometry this year. So if you're in geometry, you'll be in bio one questions okay social studies everyone will be scheduled for US history too okay um, there are some learning support periods so we don't call them study skills at the high school we call them learning support periods if you need those in your schedule as well so just keep that in mind and then finally Miss Fortuna is not down here she is the visual art teacher at the high school but your options are to take art visual art uh, is a semester or is a full year so if you take it as a semester, you'll take or you'll want to schedule introduction to visual art, okay? If you want to take it the whole year, you'll schedule that and you'll schedule visual art one, which is the second semester if you want to do a whole credit of visual art, okay? Say you can only fit one in or maybe you want to do one in a study hall opposite of that. You can do that as well, but which one do you need to take? What's the first one you need to take? Somebody say it. Oh, good, good. Not, well, not with this right now, buddy. Intro, right? You can't take art one until you take the semester of intro to visual art. So remember that if you plan on taking those, okay? And I know a lot of you enjoy doing that stuff, so if you like that and want to schedule that in, do that. Again, on the bottom, those were all the things that you have to take, and you have to schedule at least one elective credit. So of those classes that we have on there, what are your elective options? So we went through everything. This is anything a ninth grader could take, right? But what are the ones you're actually going to have to make a decision about? Uh, French or Spanish, if you wanna use one of those as an elective. TV news production, if you wanna use one of the, or if you wanna use that for it. Uh, band or choir, remember marching band doesn't count towards that number, that's separate. Stagecraft is a half a credit, so a semester class, uh, and visual art classes, the intro to art or art one or both, okay? So there's about five things you can pick from to fill that elective spot you want, one or two spots, okay? Questions about anything I just mentioned right there? No? All right. 
this part is really important for you and for parents so you know like how are we going to go about what we're going to do so you can decide what you want to do moving forward okay so right now we're having our class meeting and what you're doing over the next week with your core teachers with your math teachers english uh, science social studies whoever needs to help you decide what your next class is they are going to help you do that over the next week and give that information to mr walters and myself and the school counselors so what you're going to do now you're going to look at this you're going to take this in and let this digest for a couple days and you're going to get a blackboard from mrs bogan or mr walters uh, parents and students you're going to get it in an email so you just need to fill it out once but it's an elective interest form and all it does is simply list every elective you could take french one spanish one tv production band choir band band choir art visual art all those different things okay and all you'll simply do is put your first and last name on it you fill it out once and you say that these are the one or two or one and a half electives that i want to have put into my schedule for next year okay you simply fill out that form and we expect you to have that done by the end of the day on monday march 6th parents we're sending that to you so you can do that with them if you would like uh, if you don't have that done by march 6th mr rand is going to be calling you down uh, while in school next week because we have to know what you think you might want to take with that this is an interest form so if something changes throughout the next couple months and you need to make a change or maybe it doesn't fit into your schedule with the other things you need we'll make that change but for right now we want you to really be conscientious about picking one one and a half or two electives okay again what are the options on there French one or Spanish one TV news production the band or choir classes stagecraft which is a semester or the visual art classes whether you have it a semester or the whole year taking both semesters of it okay next up so in March after we know what you put down and we have an idea of what classes your teachers are saying for English and math and all those things then Mr. Walters and I sit down and we do a thing putting down called the master schedule which is every teacher every class everything that happens in the high school we write it all down so we make sure that we have enough classes available for you based on what you said you want to do okay and then after that your school counselors mr ann mrs fulton and mr hannah who's not here today will actually take what you put down take what your teachers put down and they will actually put that into a schedule and formulate that over the next month okay at the end of april they're going to come down here during a win time and they're going to actually give you a copy of your schedule where you're going to review it with them and then you're going to take that home and have your parent review it and sign it and bring it back so we know that you know and your parents know that this is what's going to be your schedule moving forward if something would change we would tell you that in the summer if something needed to change okay everything's subject to change until the first day of school for the mo most part if we try our best uh, but sometimes things have to change okay uh, and then either late April or early May is when they'll come down and actually give you your schedule for that okay before the end of the school year we're going to have a move up day like mr walter said okay and what our plan is is you're actually going to go through all eight of your periods in order meet your teachers and things like that uh, sometime in may probably the last it's the last monday you have school you'll actually come up to the high school and do that so it's like a start to orientation already you can go around your schedule make sure you're good to go so after school's done we have a thing called add drop period okay so say you need to make a change or you would like something to change so just like if parents if you went to a secondary or post-secondary school you have a certain amount of time you're allowed to drop or add a class without penalty so our, our time is the day after school's out may 26th exactly one month till june 25th so if you need to make a change to your schedule without penalty in the summer we only accept changes up through june 25th and those changes only go to your future school counselor mrs fulton or mr hannah the slide on the end will give you that information for that okay after june 25th so you have a month to decide like i don't know i, I might need to do something else you cannot make a scheduling change until the first day of school we will not accept changes in july or august okay because our you know our staff goes on vacations and things like that and we want to make sure that we are being very uh, consistent on this so you have a month after school is done if you want to do that so we will not accept any scheduling changes through that if you do need to change something during the first week of school 
for that. You will have 15 school days in order to make a change for that. So this is important. Maybe you put a class and you're like, I want to give that a try. I want to give that honors class a try. And then we give that a try and your teacher and you and your parents like this is not working out. You have 15 school days to make that change in your schedule. And how do you do that? You email your future school counselor to do those things. But hopefully we have that worked out already when your teachers now are kind of helping decide what class you should be taking with that, okay? Again, when you take a semester class, you have 15 school days. We call that add drop time. What happens after 15 school days? Well, you're stuck in that class. If you need to make a change, you get a course withdrawal fail, which means you failed that class for that year if you do that after 15 days. So it's not to scare you, it's just to make sure that we're following a schedule here, right? You have all this time right now to make those decisions. You've got like three months basically to decide if you really wanna follow a schedule you're doing. Last thing I wanna say about picking the schedules. It's important that you are really serious about this when you're filling these things out right now and you're talking to your teachers. Because what could happen when you go to schedule something else way later on is a class might be full already because every kid was scheduled in April for their classes. So if you need to make a change in June or when school starts or September, you might not get into a class and then you're forced to stay in the class you're in because you need to meet your credit requirements and all those things. So right now, when your English teachers and your math teachers are talking to you about these classes, listen to them, because they are going to make sure you're getting a class that you're gonna be successful in. I know you wanna do certain things, and we hear this often, but oftentimes we end up changing it and then you know, you're a month into school and then we're already having problems, right? Listen to your teachers, they're gonna help you. You just really need to pick right now what electives you wanna do and explore doing this stuff, okay? But we stick to those timelines when we do those things. Any questions about that? Parents, any questions? Okay, this last one is who your school counselor is. And remember, I'm sending this out, or Mrs. Bogan or Mr. Walters will later on. So your counselor, your school counselor moving forward that helps you do this, does your schedule, does, helps with academics and all those things, is Mrs. Fulton, if you have last name A through K, all right, and that's her email on there. And then Mr. Hanna, who you'll meet uh, sometime next month or in April, is for last name L through Z. Thanks. All right, any questions about that? So that's basically when you need to make a change, that's who you're talking to if you do those things, okay? That's it for that info stuff. So once again, a lot of information coming at your way. I will say, and to echo some of the things that Dr. Shipman was talking about, we're trying to get you career ready. That's where we're trying to go, not college ready, career ready. So the choices that you start to make at your freshman year is really gonna dictate where your path is through your senior year and onward. Talk to your parents about your choices. Take time, digest this information, and we promise you, we will support you through any decision you make. There are a ton of supports offered for you too at the high school level. Quick review, how many, up, what is the minimum amount of electives that you can choose? What is the minimum, Mr. Pompeo? One, what is the maximum that you can choose? Hernandez. Two, does band count in one of those one or two? Yeah, it does for the regular band. Yes, for regular band, but marching band, does that count? No, so those are the big questions that we typically get. Any other questions, any questions that you wanna ask are seniors over here that have been through this process. One uh, thing for those of you that are doing marching band, the prerequisite to be in marching band uh, for an instrumentalist is that they are in the band period during the day. So your one elective should be band 910 or band choir 910 if you wanna do both for that. If you wanna do band and choir, you schedule band slash choir, that's one elective, not two. So if you wanna do both of those, that's considered one just like it is now, one class period. As we said, there will be emails coming out to you for uh, the information from these slides. On top of that, there will be an electronic copy of these course descriptions along with that Google form. So be aware of those, talk to your parents. I know we appreciate the parents coming in today to hear this information. There is a lot that goes on with the scheduling promise, but, process, but once again, there are gonna be opportunities for you to come visit the high school, meet your teachers, May 22nd, May 22nd will be your move-up day in the afternoon. You'll have the opportunity to tour the high school. Our goal is to have that schedule in your hands so you can actually go through the classes and get to meet your teachers. 
about a week before school starts in August, orientation. So parents that are watching via YouTube, parents in, try to avoid scheduling any vacations. Some of those are already planned. We will work with you to get your students in here uh, or at the high school to tour the building. Okay? Any questions for our seniors? Okay, give them a round of applause. Takes a lot of courage. And typically, I know Dr. Shipman covered a lot today. Uh, Mrs. Fulton's a little bit under the weather, so she's lost her voice. She, sh she would typically, along with Mr. Hanna, be talking about some of these things. But once again, she'll be meeting with you. Thank you again for your attention. Parents, if you want to stick around and ask any questions to us in particular, you can. Let's start by uh, dismissing our eighth graders. Starting this side, we're going to go back to homerooms, and then we'll make an announcement to go fourth period. Middle section, go ahead and go out this way, please.